thinking of moving to Bozeman, Montana? You've probably seen headlines uh, about how it's the best place to live, the best place to retire, or how some of the skiing here is absolutely incredible, and all these other amazing reasons why you should move here. But all that said, it's not for everyone. Well, in this video, I'm going to go into some of the reasons why you might not want to move here and why some people are leaving. I've got the top 10 reasons not to move to Bozeman, so let's get right into it. By the way, my name is Hallie. I'm a local real estate agent. And if this is your first time to the channel, then be sure to subscribe below and tap the bell for notifications so you can be the first to know about the current market here in Bozeman and the surrounding areas here in Southwest Montana, like Big Sky, Ennis, Livingston, and Three Forks. The team and I get calls, texts, and emails from people just like you every single day, and we absolutely love it. Whether you're looking to buy or sell or move or invest, uh, in the next couple of weeks, couple of months, or even a year, then be sure to get in touch. You can give us a call, shoot us a text, send us an email, or we can even set up a Zoom. All my information is in the description below. And so with that, let's get right back into it with those negatives about living in Bozeman. So we find that a lot of people moving here, especially from out of state, moving to Montana, specifically to Bozeman, are seeking that small town life. And that's certainly what Bozeman still is, especially when you compare it to some of the larger cities in some of the other states people are traveling from, such as Washington State, Texas, Colorado, and California. And with the influx of people that we've seen over the past few years, we've definitely seen some interesting activity in the market. Typically in Montana, the market flows with the seasons. So we're going to see busier buying and selling season in the spring and summer. And then in the fall and winter, things tend to cool off with the temperatures really. So when it really comes down to it right now, we're seeing a pretty typical spring and summer market. However, our inventory is down right now by about 20% from this time last year, which is pretty significant. So we're still seeing a pretty typical seller's market with that low inventory, and it's making for a very interesting buying environment. With the university and a pretty highly rated school system, as well as plentiful outdoor adventure, Bozeman is definitely getting some attention. But it also means that it's really important to know what it means to live here year round. And I'm happy to help in any way I can. So stick around until the end because I'm going to be covering the 10 most important things to know before moving to Bozeman, Montana. Number one on the list is the cost of living. So the cost of living in Bozeman specifically is about 20% higher than the state average and about 22% higher than the national average. And a good portion of that is due to housing costs, um, which is about 60% higher than the national average, which I'm gonna be getting more into here in just a moment. Other items like transportation and goods and services aren't nearly as high, and healthcare is actually just a little bit lower than the national average. But generally speaking, when the cost of living is higher and the wages don't necessarily keep up with that, it can definitely be difficult as far as a place to live. And some other things that people tend to perceive as being higher, you know, a higher cost of living around here are things like insurance, groceries, and dining out. Number two on the list today is housing. Finding a home here can definitely be tough. Montana's fast growing popularity caused quite the boom in real estate over the past few years. Even towns like Three Forks and Manhattan and Livingston that are quite a bit smaller have seen an increase in value and a lot of activity these past few years. And while it seems the craziest market might be behind us, it does seem that things are holding pretty steady, at least with that seasonal flow. Uh, homes and properties that are priced over a million are sitting a little bit longer now. I mean, under that $800,000 mark that are priced well are still going fast and seeing multiple offer situations. It really comes down to supply and demand. And right now the demand still far outweighs the supply. Um, we are again about 20% down in inventory than where we were last year this time. And those rising home costs have affected the rental market as well. Again, it comes down to supply and demand. There's a lot of demand and not as much supply. So it can be really, really difficult. Add on top of that, that Bozeman is a very dog friendly and dog or pet focused town. And a lot of uh, property owners or property managers don't allow that. So it can be really difficult or extra difficult if you have a pet with you and you're trying to find a place to rent. Another item related to Bozeman's economy, a third thing on the list here today is uh, jobs. 
So Bozeman's unemployment rate is below 2%, but many people say that the job market here lacks diversity and lacks enough high-paying jobs for everyone. And certainly, again, when you compare Bozeman and some of the larger towns in Montana to bigger cities, there's certainly not going to be the same career opportunities that you can find there. According to payscale.com, the average salary in Bozeman is about $65,000 per year. But of course, some of those higher paying jobs um, at and above that are going to have quite fierce competition. The most common or most popular occupations around the Bozeman area are civil engineer, mechanical engineer, and project manager, with some of the top employers being Bozeman Health, Murdoch's Ranch and Home Supply, as well as Oracle and Morrison Merrily, and of course, Montana State University. For lower wage positions in the Bozeman area, like service jobs, hospitality, um, groundskeeping and sales, the wages in Bozeman are pretty comparable to the national average. Higher paying jobs certainly pull that uh, overall average salary a bit higher, but there are less opportunities. And when you compare all of this with the rising housing costs, it doesn't necessarily balance out. Bozeman is also a highly educated area, and because of this, many people who have a degree can end up underemployed. College graduates from Montana State University right here locally in Bozeman, as well as colleges all around the country and the area, uh, you know, those students tend to be drawn here, which can create some pretty serious competition. Just this year, 2,000 students graduated from Montana State University. A few years back, the job market was actually more limited, as these past few years we've seen several businesses move into the area. While the tech scene in Bozeman is certainly growing, and that's one of the bigger parts of the growth in the job market that you see in Bozeman, tourism is still a big part of the job market and economy here. So this is one of the reasons why we tend to see uh, those with higher degrees still working in service and hospitality industries. There's also a great entrepreneurial spirit here in Bozeman, which does bring you know, new businesses and more jobs, but those aren't always the highest paying. One of the main reasons that we tend to hear of people leaving the area is to go find better opportunities, higher pay, and a lower cost of living. Next up on the list today, number four is the weather. Most people here who live in Bozeman um, likely take part in some kind of winter sports. But there are certainly people who live here and people who might be considering moving here who don't like winter. Winter starts as early as September, but more typically into October and November and can last all the way clear through April and maybe even into May. With winter being long with, you know, shorter days and less daylight, uh, it's definitely a part of daily life around here during those winter months. And winter being as cold and as long as it is does definitely mean that some of our other seasons tend to be a bit shorter. So spring and fall are, you know, kind of transitional seasons, not necessarily more than a few weeks each year. Certainly some years we have more significant spring and fall, uh, but most years we might be looking at two to three weeks as we transition from summer to winter and winter back to summer. Many locals will make the jokes about uh, what our seasons actually are, like we have winter construction and fire season, or perhaps it's almost winter, winter, still winter, and summer. And with winter being such a part of daily life around here, uh, you will not find snow days. Typically speaking, whether it is super cold, really snowy, maybe we see 12 uh, inches of snow or more overnight, or you know, maybe we're in the middle of a cold snap where it's below zero, it can get 20 below, and that's not even factoring in uh, you know, wind chill, even with those kinds of conditions, you're still going to be expected to get your kid to school or be at work. And of course, that does mean you're going to have regular, uh, you know, snow removal maintenance type things, whether it's uh, snow throwing your driveway or getting out there to shovel your sidewalk. And typically, uh, the winter temperatures range between, you know, a low of around 10 degrees Fahrenheit up to a high of around 30. Um, so those negative temperatures don't happen often. Those cold snaps typically happen somewhere in January and February and sometimes more than once. And any given season, the weather can change quickly. So you may not want to trust, you know, the weather predictions or the weather report. You may want to keep an eye on that and always be prepared. You know, most people who live here learn uh, to, in the winter time, have those snow tires and all-wheel drive um, and even in the summer, carry layers and all kinds of supplies 
in their vehicle. They say if you live in Montana long enough, you'll probably see a snowstorm any given month of the year. And I can attest to that. I have seen it myself. Now, all that being said, of course, the winters around here are absolutely wonderful. If you do decide to get outside and embrace it, especially uh, the skiing and snowboarding and snowmobiling around the area is absolutely phenomenal with Ridger Bowl and Big Sky being the two closest ski areas. And of course, getting outside in the summer is phenomenal as well. There's rivers and fishing and tons to get out and enjoy. Now, another thing I already touched on a little bit, which is number five on the list, is fire season. Uh, it has become pretty well standard or you know normal that in the late summer months, we do experience a fire season. That can mean localized fires you know, in the forests nearby, or it can mean uh, smoke from, you know, other parts of Montana or neighboring states or as far away as Canada or Oregon or California. And what that often amounts to is smoke here in the Gallatin Valley, and it can severely affect the air quality at times. It's not usually too long lived. Uh, usually different weather patterns and things like that move the smoke around or move it out of the area unless it's more localized, of course. Uh, but it does affect you know, everyday life, whether it's just going out and running errands or trying to make plans to be outside, or maybe you're going camping and you're not allowed to have a campfire because of fire restrictions. It's definitely something worth keeping in mind. And with some of those similar health concerns, something to also keep in mind is that there are uh, seasonal allergens and pollen that can be in the air, particularly in springtime. Um, so depending again on the sunshine or the rain or the snow runoff or whatever other weather patterns are coming through, it can definitely uh, affect those who are susceptible to it. All right, number six on the list here is entertainment. So I've already touched on it a little bit, but a lot of the, you know, uh, outdoor recreation around here is absolutely prevalent, um, you know, with most of the entertainment being outdoor based. Uh, so that can actually leave some other options lacking. Bozeman is certainly starting to get more and more, you know, concerts and other opportunities for entertainment, uh, but there's not a lot of indoor venues either. There's a couple of new ones, one being the Elm. The Ponderosa Social Club is a new uh, business in the area that's great, especially for adults. Um, and of course, there's, you know, the Museum of the Rockies and the Science Museum and the Brick Breeden Fieldhouse at MSU is a great venue for larger concerts. So the opportunities for outdoor recreation truly are endless. Um, and that goes for kids as well. You know, we've got everything from skiing and snowboarding and snowmobiling in the winter uh, to rock climbing and camping and hiking and, you know, getting out on the water, boating, rafting, fishing uh, to hunting as well. And again, you're going to see kids. It's common The families will be out doing a lot of these things together if your family likes that sort of thing. Now, if your family isn't so into the outdoors, that can definitely be a drawback. So with that, things to do around the valley here that are not outdoor focused can be harder to find. And if you're into big sporting events and, and big sports teams and that sort of thing, we don't have much of that here either. Of course, there is Montana State University with, you know, basketball and great football games. And of course, the Cat Grizz rivalry between Montana State University and University of Montana over in Missoula. But outside of that, there's just not much. Now, this isn't necessarily a positive or a negative, but number seven on the list is politics. Montana generally tends to be conservative leaning, but there are going to be pockets or different areas in the state that are less so and maybe even lean in the other direction. So if you're specifically wanting to be in a place where your neighbors are putting out the same signs as you come election time, then it might be helpful to look at some local election results. So depending on what you're looking for, why you're moving, and what cultural aspects are important to you, it can definitely be something worth looking into. And with the differences uh, there between some of the larger towns versus some of the smaller towns, it may help you determine if you want to be in Bozeman or in Missoula or some more similar, or if you'd like to be in some of the small towns uh, outside of those bigger cities for Montana. Now, number eight on the list is the hunting culture. Montana has 94 million acres in total. It's the fourth largest state in the country. And 27 million acres of that is public lands. And again, when you get outside of some of the bigger cities like Bozeman, Missoula, 
uh, you're going to find more of that ranching and farming and more Western culture. And with that comes hunting. So you're going to see a lot of different outdoors stores that have a hunting focus. You might hear gunshots outside of town during hunting season, and you may also see an elk in the back of somebody's pickup truck during that time of year. So if that's something you're sensitive to or, you know, that bothers you, it might be something worth keeping in mind. All that being said, the wildlife around the area is absolutely beautiful and it's wonderful to see, um, you know, the elk herds that can be south of town near Gallatin Gateway in particular, uh, the deer and all kinds of other animals that are nearby. But again, if you're bothered by that hunting, you may have a little bit of a challenge ahead of you here uh, around the Gallatin Valley or other parts of Montana come hunting season. As I said, Montana is a big state and there are so many wide open spaces here still. And that being said, the state can be pretty rural when you get outside of some of the major towns. So number nine on the list is services, really. You know, it's a pretty rural area, even around the Gallatin Valley and Bozeman. Uh, there's going to be limited services compared to bigger cities. There is a public transportation system in the Streamline bus, and there are some Ubers and Lyfts and, and car services like that, but you're not going to be able to rely on public transportation. The area as a whole is pretty vehicle dependent, and it is going to be pretty important to have your own vehicle in order to live here, unless you live downtown and live very close to where you plan to work and you don't need to get around too much. As the area has grown, we've definitely seen an increase in traffic and commute times. And there's something to be said for the fact that Bozeman maybe hasn't entirely kept up with some of that growth in terms of the services that are offered. So in reality, finding a place in Bozeman or the surrounding areas here in southwest Montana or really all over Montana might mean giving up some of those comforts of bigger city life. Another example of this, of course, is, you know, the shopping and various services and then uh, going as far as cell service in certain areas, certain parts of Montana driving down the highway or certain small towns. Service might be spotty or missing entirely. Also included in this, the Bozeman uh, Airport called the Yellowstone International Airport. It's still a fairly small airport uh, with limited flights and they can be a little bit pricier to fly in and out of than you would find in a larger hub type of city, you know, with a big airport. There's more and more direct flights, of course, and as it has grown, they've done a lot of wonderful things bringing those in and being able to offer more options, but it's still not inexpensive to fly in and out of Bozeman. You still may find yourself looking for connecting flights or having to make a stop somewhere that is a larger hub. But again, there are more and more direct flights coming to the area, largely thanks to Yellowstone National Park, of course, and Big Sky Resort. Another element worth considering when it comes to those services is healthcare and access to, you know, specific healthcare type facilities. Uh, not everywhere is going to have the same services, and those smaller rural towns tend to be a little bit further away from the larger, more well-equipped medical facilities. And number 10 on the list today is that Bozeman has indeed changed. Uh, before it was on all of the lists, all of the best places to live, best place to retire, best place to have a vacation home or a ski home. Before all of that, Bozeman was a bit quieter, um, a little bit more subdued uh, before it was on the map like it is now. There was definitely still tourism and it was just as beautiful then as it is now, of course, but it was more well known as just a quieter town where you could come visit Yellowstone or go up to Big Sky for those who had discovered Big Sky at that point. Now, Bozeman is known as Bozangeles to most of the state. Uh, it does have a thriving economy, but that does mean some of the wide open spaces have turned into subdivisions. Some of the trailheads are a bit more crowded and the traffic has increased and not everybody is thrilled about it. A lot of the people who are leaving Bozeman are heading to other places in Montana. So some of the things that are attracting some people to the area are also pushing other people who used to know Bozeman how it was away. So it's not necessarily crowded yet, at least not like other major cities in, uh, you know, more populated areas of the country. But it has gotten to be more and more of a topic amongst those who live here and who have lived here a long time. And people are getting more and more vocal about how they feel about it, especially on online forums. So you may want to consider this before getting on to some of those uh, online platforms and stating that you're thinking about moving here or that you've moved here out of state. 
Most locals are incredibly friendly and welcoming, but they are a little bit protective and selfish about the place that they've called home for quite some time now and don't necessarily want to share. They want to protect it and preserve it the way that it's always been. So those are the top 10 reasons not to move to Bozeman, Montana. Is it the right place for you? Are you looking for somewhere bigger? Perhaps you're looking for somewhere smaller that's not a college town. There are a ton of wonderful small towns all around southwest and western Montana to also take a look at. And if you're curious about any of those other small towns, of course, I've got videos on Helena and Three Forks and Livingston and Gallatin Gateway. I'll be heading out to Ennis as well. And there's more to come. And these towns are absolutely beautiful spots right here in southwest Montana as well. And if you've got any questions, be sure to leave those in the comments below. And I'd be happy to connect with you and answer those. In my work as a relocation specialist, it is my job to work alongside of you to find the right city, the right town, the right location, and the right property, all while maximizing your time and putting in the strongest offer possible. I've watched this area grow and I've got great relationships and connections all over the Gallatin Valley and beyond. So it's a wonderful thing, in my opinion at least, to have someone who is local in your corner working for you. Ultimately, I am here to get to know you, get to know what you're looking for, and help you in the best way possible. I've definitely got your back. So with all of that said, whether you're looking to buy or sell or move or invest in the next couple of weeks, a few months, or even a year, feel free to get in touch. You can give me a call, shoot me a text, send me an email, or we can even set up a Zoom, and I'd be honored to help you find your place here in Bozeman and the surrounding areas here in Southwest Montana. And until next time, I hope to see you out here.